Lisa Kudrow, star of Friends, is one of the most successful producers and screenwriters in the industry. But did you know that she almost had a career as a medical scientist instead? And how did she manage to have such a successful career after Friends ended? We will cover that in this video and some other little known shocking facts about Lisa Kudrow while showing you some of her rare photos. On July 30th, 1963 in Encino, Los Angeles, Lisa Kudrow was born to Nedra and Lee Kudrow. Her mother was a travel agent and her father was a doctor who specialized in treating headaches. Lisa is of Belarusian, German, Hungarian, and Polish descent. As a matter of fact, most of her Belarusian ancestors, who were Jews, were killed in the Holocaust. This included her father's grandmother. Her father's mother, however, escaped to New York. This was where Phoebe's father was raised. Consequently, Lisa and her brother and sister were raised Jewish. She even had a bat mitzvah. She attended Portola Middle School in Tarzana, Los Angeles. She then went on to attend Taft High School in the Woodland Hills neighborhood. Interestingly, Lisa attended Taft around the same time as Easy e Ice Cube, and Robin Wright. There, she excelled at tennis and even played for the varsity team. After graduation, she pursued a BA in biology at Vassar College. She then returned to Los Angeles to assist her father with his medical research. Acting wasn't really an interest of hers at the time. However, her brother's childhood friend John Lovitz, who went on to become an esteemed comedian, encouraged her to perform. This was how it all began for her as an actor. Interestingly, even while struggling to break in, Lisa never abandoned her father. She stayed on his research team for eight years, so much so that she earned a research credit on one of his academic studies. This was all well and good, but success in the industry was proving to be much, much trickier. Should Lisa have focused exclusively on her medical career? Was she being a fool by pursuing acting? First off, Lisa started with stand-up comedy. She joined the prestigious sketch comedy and improv troupe, The Groundlings. There, she honed her comedic skills. She also worked with other troops like Unexpected Company, alongside Conan O'Brien and the Transformers Comedy Group. During her time with the Groundlings, her relationship with American comedian Cynthia Segetti proved to be very important to Lisa's career. As a matter of fact, Lisa has given her direct credit for changing her perspective on acting. In her own words, Cynthia Segetti is the best thing that ever happened to me on so many levels. She gave Lisa the skills that would help her succeed in the industry. After that, Lisa tried to break into TV, but this was proving to be very rocky terrain. In 1990, when she was 27 years old, she managed to land an appearance on the hit comedy show, Cheers. However, when she tried to use this to earn a role on Saturday Night Live, her attempts were unsuccessful. The studio went with Julia Sweeney instead. This meant that Lisa had to continue picking up guest roles wherever she could find them. During this time, she appeared in the show's New Heart, Bob, and Close Encounters. Lisa thought she had gotten her first TV break when she was cast as Roz Doyle in the NBC sitcom Fraser. But right before the pilot episode was filmed, the role was recast with Perry Gilpin instead. Years later, Lisa explained that during rehearsals, she could just feel that it wasn't working, which made her panic. Trusting her gut, she decided to walk away from the show. Not many actors in her financial position would have had the strength to do this, but this is part of what made Elisa special. Was she being silly to walk away from such a hit show? Should she have stayed on no matter how things felt? Well, it would be interesting to see a reality where Lisa had done just that. But in this reality, life had other things in store for her. Lisa's first recurring television role was in the NBC sitcom Mad About You. She played an eccentric spacey waitress, Ursula Buffet. While this role was a step beneath what Lisa wanted of herself, it would prove to be instrumental in the near future, especially when NBC started putting plans together for a new sitcom named Friends. Friends followed the adventures of a woman named Rachel, who flees from her wedding and reconnects with her childhood friend Monica. Going from one social class to another, she is welcomed by Monica's motley group of friends, including Chandler, Ross, Joey, and, of course, Phoebe. When Friends premiered in 1994, it became an instant hit. All the actors involved in its production, Jennifer Aniston, Courtney Cox, Matt LeBlanc, Matthew Perry, and David Schwimmer became superstars. Of course, Lisa Kudrow was not left behind. Playing the role of Ursula's twin sister, she was a fan favorite. In terms of lines spoken, total number of appearances, and total number of words, 
the character of Phoebe Buffay ranks the lowest among the main cast. However, with whatever time she was given, Lisa made sure to maximize her impact. By design, the role was written to be that of the quirky one, or the odd one out. Rather than fight for more screen time, Lisa leveraged her popularity in other brilliant ways. But the question is, was this a silly strategy? Should she have fought for more screen time on Friends? Well, if we've learned anything about Lisa so far, it's that she trusts her gut. Now, most actors would have been content to work only on Friends. After all, at the height of the show's popularity, each member of the main cast was earning $1 million per episode, making them the highest paid TV stars in history. But as for Lisa, she had other plans. She had a marvelous strategy for putting herself out there. While still working on Friends, she had time to appear in several comedy movies such as Romy and Michelle's High School Reunion, Hanging Up, Marcy X, Dr. Dolittle 2, Analyze This, and Analyze That. She also flexed her dramatic chops in the movies Wonderland and The Opposite of Sex. As if this wasn't enough, she appeared in numerous television series such as The Simpsons, Hope and Gloria, and King of the Hill. She also finally lived out her dream of hosting Saturday Night Live. These appearances made sure that Lisa was known for other things rather than just playing the weird character Phoebe. It also ensured that audiences were fully aware of her range as an actress. As a result, when Friends ended in 2004, she wasn't worried about being typecast. After all, both producers and audiences were keenly aware of what she could do. Post Friends, each member of the cast went their own way. They were all so rich that they never had to work again. However, some of them had better luck than others. Lisa and Jennifer Aniston arguably went on to have the best careers of all. So far, Lisa had demonstrated what she could do as an actress. But this time, she wanted to show off her skills as a screenwriter and a producer. In 2005, she produced a single season show known as The Comeback about a former sitcom star who wanted to make a career comeback. It was so successful that it earned Lisa an Emmy Award nomination. HBO revived the series in 2014. Lisa, who reprised her role, again earned an Emmy nomination. Another show she produced was Web Therapy in 2012. The show was about a therapist who had conceived of a new, exciting treatment. Again, the show was such a success that it was nominated for an Emmy Award. It also won a number of Webby Awards. Lisa was a star and co-producer of the U.S. version of the British television series, Who Do You Think You Are? In this show, celebrities trace back their roots over several generations. This was how she found out that her paternal grandmother had been a victim of the Holocaust. Again, the show was such a success that it was nominated for multiple Emmy Awards. In 2001, Lisa joined other members of the cast of Friends for a reunion TV special. Little did they know that this was the final time they would all be together. In November 2023, the lovable but troubled Matthew Perry was found dead. Lisa and the rest of the cast made a joint statement about the sorrow of their loss. Lisa has been married once to French advertising executive Michael Stern. They live in Beverly Hills with their son, Julian. Interestingly, when Lisa got pregnant during the filming of Friends, the producers wrote her pregnancy into the show. This was a very risky tactic considering other producers had tried the same thing only to have it blow up in their faces. Katie Segal, who had a miscarriage during the filming of Married with Children, is a typical example. Thankfully for Lisa, this didn't happen to her. Entering her 60s, Lisa Kudrow remains a powerful force in the industry. Even if she gives up acting, she's demonstrated such wonderful skill at screenwriting and producing. In reality, she's a far cry from the airheaded Phoebe Buffet. But what do you think? Did she have a better post-Friends career than Jennifer Aniston? In any case, Lisa is a star in her own right. She remains an inspiration for many people all over the world. If you enjoyed this video, there's a good chance you'll also enjoy the one showing on your screen right now. Click, enjoy, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you on the next one.